those that are watching online. I'm so glad you joined us. If you're on the line, just come on in. We're going to get started. And if you can stand, let's worship God for song. Angels, we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoes in their joyous strain.
Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are staying safe, that your family, your loved ones are, are healthy. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to celebrate you sending your son to us, to redeem us, to save us. God, we thank you for a chance to worship him. For a chance to give back what he deserves. God, we ask that you would meet with us today. That you would move among the people in this room. That you would move in our hearts and wake us up a little bit. And draw us closer to you. In your name we pray. You guys can take a seat if you want. Merry Christmas! It's like actually time to say Merry Christmas. That's very exciting. Uh, I was so glad to worship with you guys tonight. Uh, everybody who's here in person, online campus, Merry Christmas to you. We are so glad that you are here too. And um, my name is Shelly. I'm the creative arts pastor here, and I I'm just glad to be here. I am so excited about Christmas. I get really excited about it every year. And uh, we would love to know that you are here. So super easy way to do that. Uh, online campus too. You both can just jump onto communitychristianchurch.com. You click connect. And there is a digital connect card. And you can ask us questions. You can leave comments. You can tell us your prayer requests. We as a staff, we pray over y'all every single week. So we would love to know what's going on with you and your family. And then we're so glad that you're worshiping here uh, for our When Christmas Goes Sideways Christmas Eve. And we have something else special for you if you want. Uh, we have created an online traditional candlelight service because we can't really huddle together and light candles this year, but we can do it online. So tomorrow at 9 o'clock p.m., we are going to be streaming that online candlelight service. So if you want to watch with other people, you can do that. But if you want early access to it, it's on our YouTube channel right now. So you can take that home and you can watch it late tonight if you want to with your family or, or at midnight tomorrow or Christmas morning before you open your presents. We would love for you to share that with your friends and family. And then, hey, um, we'd love for you to come back this coming Sunday. We are doing a micro-series. Uh, Noah Henson, the student pastor, and I talked Scott into letting us do our own little micro-series of SIA 2020, and we are going to send this year off the way it should be. But there won't be pyrotechnics, sadly. I'm sorry. So anyway, um, you guys, if you haven't been here in a while or if this is your first time here, we celebrate communion together at the very end of the service. So that's what those little cups were when you walked in the door. If you didn't grab one, they're in the chair racks right in front of you. So you can just have those. Make sure you've got enough. If you didn't, just run and go get some from that table. We'll do that at the end of service. And offering is, well, it's any time you want it to be. Uh, we just try to make that super easy. We are so thankful that you continue to partner with us to reach out, to spread God's word to make a difference in our community. So you can text to give, you can give on the website, you can do recurring electronic gifts, you can drop it in the offering boxes on the way out the door. Okay, online campus, you can't do that, but you can snail mail it in. So anyway, there's easy ways for you to give. We appreciate you being part of that. And right now is time for us to have our final episode of When Christmas Goes Sideways. Hey, what is going on, Community Christian Church? My name is Kyle Phillips, and my good friend Shelly asked me to share a Christmas story. So I'm going to share with you not only my favorite Christmas story, but this is my entire family's favorite Christmas story as well. So hey, guys, my name is Charlie Hines, and some of you might have heard this story before. Some of you may not have. 
For those of you who don't know me, I am pretty much Mr. Christmas. I go all freaking out in every aspect of this holiday. I love everything from putting up lights on our house. I put about 75 strands every year on our house. I'm actually getting tattooed of my favorite Christmas movies and memories. So I go kind of crazy around this time of year. So I definitely have a good story or two. When I was a little kid, a big thing for Christmas was watching like the classics, like the Christmas classics. So we would watch Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. We would watch, um, you know, he throws the ice pick up and lands in nothing, you know, silver and gold. I think I was about 12 years old. And of course, like, you know, as a 12 year old boy does, that's about when I started shooting up in height. So I was actually kind of having some growing pains just had a lot of like just excitement and just a lot of things going on in life. And you add on top of that, the excitement of the Christmas season. Well, one of the big classics was the first time I got to see uh, Frosty the Snowman. We're, you know, it's a family affair. We are all doing this whole Frosty the Snowman thing. And all of a sudden Frosty gets trapped and he can't get out and he melts. I was already so excited and so anxious for Christmas that I had myself convinced, and I mean literally convinced, that I was having a heart attack and I was going to die before Christmas morning so I couldn't open up my gifts and celebrate Christmas. And I run out of the room into the kitchen where my mom is. Now mind you, this is pre-live streaming and DVD and automatic playback. And I basically just ran into my room in tears. I'm like, Frosty's dead, Mom, Frosty's dead. So, you know, I tell my parents, I beg and plead with them to let me open up all my gifts on Christmas Eve because our tradition was we always open them up Christmas morning. Of course they say no, because that's not our tradition. We do it, we go to our Christmas Eve service at our local United Methodist Church. And she's like, no, 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 you gotta go back in there. You gotta go back in. I said, no, he's dead. I don't want, so I'm just like hanging on my mom's, my mom's leg. She's like, you gotta go back in. You gotta go, right now, you gotta go back in. And we're sitting there, we're singing hymns, we're singing Christmas carols, and my mom, who loves to tell the story, she says that she is standing in the pew, I'm standing maybe, you know, three or four people down with our entire family there, and she looks over, and I have my hand up to my neck, and she couldn't figure out what I was doing, and then it hit her. I was checking my pulse. I go back in, the song is playing. I have no idea what happened. I am distraught for a year because I have no idea. So this entire Christmas Eve service, I'm sitting there and I am checking my pulse because I am so convinced that I am going to die, have a heart attack and die before Christmas morning. The following year, I man up and I watch all this stuff again and I see that Frosty just whips himself back into existence. And I had, I basically shed tears for a year for nothing. So that is my sideways Christmas story. <laughs> so I just want to wish everyone at Community a wonderful and Merry Christmas. And that's it. Oh man, that is a lot of emotion. To begin Christmas Eve, Merry Christmas Eve, Eve, everybody, and online campus, we're so glad you guys are here with us. Um, I got to admit, Kyle, I'm, I'm with you on the fact that there was no service growing up in church as long throughout the entire year as the Christmas Eve service that I had to wait through before, you know, you get home and maybe you get to open up one present. I don't know. If you got any kids out there like that, or maybe even adults, we're with you. We're going to make this as pain-free as possible because we're, we're finishing up the Sideways Christmas um, series. And if you haven't, uh, if you've missed one or two, uh, I encourage you to go to our Facebook page, go to YouTube, um, check those out because there's been some uh, really good stuff we've talked about. Um, and, and all Sideways Christmas is, is one that does not go as expected. Something just goes not like you were planning. And I got to say, here I am on a holiday service teaching um, the Christmas Eve service, and I got to say... I didn't even plan to be here. In fact, some of you might be surprised. I'm Joel. I'm the Connect Pastor, and our lead pastor, Scott, um, he really needs to be with his um, extended family right now, and so I'm glad that he's there. But he really wishes that any of planned to be here with us. Um, so if you would, let's, let's keep them in our prayers. Just things don't go the way that we, that we plan, and, um, and that's the way uh, we want to put the point on this Sideways Christmas series about how that's true even of the original characters in the Christmas story. 
talking about Mary and Joseph specifically. I mean, look at this girl. She, she had things go completely sideways for her. She's, she's thinking, I've got an engagement to a respectable young man. This is going to go just great. Everything's fine. And then, boom, God shows up and, uh, and tells her some weird stuff. She's going to be pregnant, even though she's never been with a man. And uh, it's going to be of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and man, I got to tell you, I don't know about you, but put yourself in her place. What would some of your thoughts be? Mine would be, um, well, well, God, like, um, are, are everybody going to understand that, you know, I wasn't just, like, kind of morally loose? That, are, are you going to make that clear? I mean, like, God, is, am I still going to be taken care of? Like, is Joseph still going to marry me? Because that was, that was something I was planning on. That was something that I kind of needed to take care of me the rest of my life. Um, I, and all these questions you could think of that kind of centered around whether or not you were going to be taken care of, whether or not I was going to be taken care of. And you know what? She doesn't say any of that stuff. The only question she, the only thing that she says here, and I quote, is, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. Yeah, that's great, church. That, that is not naivety. That is not irresponsibility. And that's, that's not even teenage stupidity. Friends, an online campus, you guys got to get this. This is faith. That's what it looks like. You know, belief can sometimes, not always, but some, belief can sometimes stop short. Bel- belief could so- sometimes simply be, wow, God, that's pretty cool that you can do all that stuff. Um, I'm not sure I'm in for that plan. Let's kind of workshop this. Surely there's got to be another way to bring your Messiah child into this world. You know, can we, I'm not sure I'm in. But, but faith says, I've committed to being yours, so whatever you say goes. Faith is, you know... I, uh, I'm not sure this is going to be good for me, but I trust that whatever you say is going to be what's best for me. And think about it from Joseph's perspective. This is a young man who's got a whole life in front of him. He's got a strong family foundation and a bright future. His parents had secured for him this lovely bride um, that he, he believes is going to be a perfect fit for the life that, he, that he's envisioned. You know, he's not going to be, like, rising through the ranks of society or, or climbing, um, you know, um, economic scales. Or anything. I don't think that was really something that was a big deal in their time. But, but Joseph, I still believe, probably had dreams and hopes and had a plan for his life. I bet that included um, having kids of his own, having his own biological sons carry on his family lineage. Remember, this is a guy that's of the line of King David, a big deal for a Jewish person. And, and I bet uh, Joseph envisioned um, him meeting and falling in love with his future spouse, this merry girl. And I, I bet he imagined them doting on each other and adoring each other and their family setting an example for their community and for their neighborhood of what blessings God could pour out for a God-fearing Jewish family. I, I bet he had dreams of living happily ever after. And then God enters into his story through an angel. And this angel um, tells him all this weird stuff. And so we're going to read in Matthew chapter 1. If you want to pull out your, your Bibles, your phones, if you just want to Google Matthew chapter 1, you'll, you'll find it there. But I challenge you, we're not going to just read this through in the like Charlie Brown Christmas special, even though that's evoking and nostalgic and great. I want you to read this with new eyes and ears and, uh, and putting yourself in, the, in this, these circumstances, that these were real people who didn't have the the value of hindsight. This is happening to them in real time. In Matthew chapter 1, verses starting verse 18, it says, This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's hard to swallow. And then get this because. Because Joseph... Her husband was a faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in his mind to divorce her quietly. And after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. And the angel says to him in this like Dickensian Christmas carol dream, says, Joseph, son of David. There he is pointing out his lineage again. Um, Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Hot take here. I think putting myself in Joseph's shoes, 
even hearing what the angel said to me, I might still divorce Mary. I would be wrong, mind you. I would, I would be way off base. I would not be following God's uh, plan for my life. And, and, you know, I would miss out on those incredible blessings. But think about it. This is messy. This is difficult. Um, Joseph was divorcing her quietly so that he could be faithful to the law. Don't miss that. This, this, this good Jewish boy is engaged to be married to a woman who he's never been with, and then all of a sudden she's pregnant. The right Jewish thing to do would be to separate yourself from that immorality. In fact, if he does take her to be his wife, guess what that looks like on him? It looks like he's guilty too. And yet, the, that's why the angel tells him, don't be afraid to do this. Just follow me. Just follow God here. And so in the spirit of thinking about Joseph and Mary as real people, I, I challenge you to put yourself in their shoes. In fact, I'm going to tell you this. You and I have been in their shoes. Very different circumstances, but still, we have been in those situations where we are confronted by the word of God the truth about God, what God has called us to do. We have been prompted by the Holy Spirit, and we have had those opportunities to choose to take that bold path in following God wherever he's called us to or by going our own way. Thankfully, Joseph did the brave thing, and you can see in in chapter 1, verse 24, that when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home to be his wife. Church, when things go sideways for you, this is where you got to start. You got to start with belief, just accepting God at his word and following him. And one of the best places to begin believing is by believing what he says about you. This might be the most important Christmas Eve part that you take home. And here's just some verses of encouragement about what God actually sees you as. And how he views you. First John 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. That we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. Galatians 3, 26 and 27. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God. Through faith for all you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 4 and 5. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness so that this day should surprise you like a thief. No, you are all children of the light and children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. I'm there too. Just, just last week, I'm sitting there in the morning, and I'm trying to like push myself through a daily Bible reading and prayer, and wasn't feeling it. A, a lot of it probably had to do with me not being overly impressed with myself or, or happy with with, with who I am and what I've been doing and all that, I end up projecting on God. And thankfully, I have had this impressed upon me and told me many, many times, but that is that not God not only loves me, but he likes me. And he likes you too. He delights in you. That's why he, he, the best description he can come up with so often is that of him as his father and us as his children. Think about the way that even us as imperfect parents think about our children or or you as uh, just your best friends, like you enjoy that. And that is, that is the place that we have to start because one of the first places that our enemy is going to want to bring doubt into your life is the doubt that God cares for you. If he can get you to doubt that God has what's best for you, then it's a very short step to believing and doubting his authority in your life. And church, we, we got to start there. Let's start by believing what God has said about us and what he says for our lives and accepting that. Because when life doesn't go as, as we plan, when, when things go crooked and sideways, <laughs> like they so often have, we'll be tempted to think, man, has God abandoned me? You know, what's the point? Well, here's the point, followers of Jesus. Faith is true when it calls us to step out into the unknown. See, with Jesus' own words, he he, he just begs this out of his disciples, those who were following him. One time he goes to visit his friend who had died and been in a tomb for four days. And his, uh, his friend Mar- Martha tries to convince him, you know, you don't want to do that. There's going to be a bad odor now. The guy's been in there for four days. 
And Jesus tells her this in John chapter 11, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Church, we, will, we must believe and start our worship of God by knowing that he loves us and can care for us and he will take us through life, especially when it goes sideways. So because these two super regular normal people embrace and accept this change that God was just throwing at him, Jesus enters the world. And all kinds of promises were kept. God kept his promise to Mary, just for starters. See, Gabriel had told her not to be afraid. And he promised her that she had found favor with God and that she would conceive and bear God's son. Uh, we have, like, some weird things about Mary. Well, like, We either see her as super holy or we feel kind of sorry for her. Do you know what I mean? Um, we picture this serene woman, and she's always in a blue robe, right, with this yellow halo around her neck. Or, or we imagine a scared, lonely girl with just like the world on her shoulders. And I think that we project a lot of our own feelings onto her, and we have to be careful with that because then these people, they really do, they become characters in a story but they were real people. And if you really read the scripture, you'll see that Mary, well, she was actually brave. Um, she was gutsy. And like Joel said, God liked her. He was fond of her. He, he uh, chose her. She found favor with him. And she doesn't sound like a sad, lonely girl. When you read her words, Look at what she said to her relative Elizabeth soon after the news that she got from Gabriel. Mary responded, Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he took notice of his lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. I mean, does she sound sad or overwhelmed to you? No. I mean, she sounds overjoyed. She's going to get to spend a big part of her life as close to God as, as anyone could possibly be. I mean, can you imagine? She... <laughs> She's going to teach Jesus how to walk. She's going to hold his hand. She gets, to, she gets to watch him grow up. Luke says, um, and the child grew and became strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. Mary, she gets to be there for all of that. And then, when he grows up, she gets to boss him around like a regular mom. Jesus' re first recorded miracle cracks me up. It is something his mom told him to do. Look at this. So, the next day, there was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. This is when Jesus had grown up, okay? Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. Well, the wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told them, um, they have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem, Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. But his mother told the servants, uh, you just do whatever he tells you. And then Jesus ends up turning the water to wine to make his mom happy. Now, I don't know about you, but when my mom was alive, that was, that was just the best thing to do. Just don't argue with her. Just do what she says. It's easier for everyone. It's a mom thing. And I, it doesn't matter how old your kids are or how big they are, right? I mean, my oldest is 26 years old. He is six foot five, and you better believe I still mom him from time to time. We can't help it. 
And that is right where Jesus was. So this miraculous sign at Canaan and Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. And that after the wedding, he went to Capernaum for a few days with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples. Can you see how comfortable Mary and Jesus were with each other? She was fully aware of his power, yet familiar enough to mom him, a grown man, in front of his friends and followers. This is not a timid woman. And I love that. And I love that as a result, it helped his disciples believe in him. I mean, I don't know. Maybe mom does know best sometimes. I'm just saying. But listen, this woman was the woman God chose. She found favor with God. God was fond of her. And here we are still talking about her and her choices thousands of years later, just like she said. And Mary was with Jesus from the beginning all the way to the end. And as hard as that was sometimes, I am guessing that she wouldn't have had it any other way. If you're a believer, if you're a follower, you know the best place to be is close to Jesus. Those are your best moments. No, no, I didn't, I didn't say your easiest moments. Sometimes it takes things going, well, completely sideways to bring us close to God. Sometimes it takes a global pandemic. I don't know. But God kept his promise to Mary. And his plan also made it possible for Mary and Joseph, if you think about it, to keep their promise to each other. They were able to do all those things that Joel just talked about. They were able to marry and raise a family together after all. But this, with a marriage based on trust and honesty and purity because they laid it all out at the get-go. They got to have a life together. And around these big holidays, we tend to talk about baby Jesus or Easter Jesus. And sometimes we forget there was a whole life in between. And we catch these little glimpses through stories. Luke records one story where Jesus and his family went to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Jesus was 12 years old at the time. And after the festival, they all headed home. And a day into the journey, Mary and Joseph realized that Jesus wasn't with them. Not that they were being neglectful, but they were all just traveling in a big group with friends and families. And they assumed that, you know, Jesus was mixed in there somewhere. I mean, it happens, right? We lost my oldest uh, at Disney World when he was 10 years old. And I cannot even express the sheer panic that I felt as a mom. And it always helped me relate to this story in a new way. Here is, here's just part of that story. So after three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. That is biblical for we have been worried sick. Do you understand? Okay. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Don't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they, they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them, and he was obedient to them. But his mother... Oh, his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. We read several times where Mary stored up these moments in her heart and her mind. Jesus probably had, I mean, a whole lifetime of those kinds of moments. 
He was able to grow up in a family like a regular kid. And we just get these little glimpses of his life, and it leaves us wanting more. One of his closest followers and friends, John, wrote, Jesus also did many other things. If they were all written down, I suppose a whole world could not contain the books that would be written. Oh, but I hope that we get to know someday, don't you? Jesus wasn't just a baby in a manger or a man on a cross. It's dangerous to keep him in either of those places because then well, he becomes like a decoration you bring out once or twice a year. And he is so, so much more than that. So in the middle of Sideways Christmas, we see God kept his promises to Mary and Joseph. Joseph and Mary kept their promises to each other. And lastly, and probably most importantly, the reason why we celebrate here is because this is God keeping his promise to the entire world. And not just in the Bible times, like Matthew kind of world. This is Jesus keeping his promise, God keeping his promises to all of us through all time, even here in 2020 and beyond. And this is, uh, this is from the prophet Isaiah. You know this. But just remember that Isaiah was given this prophecy about Jesus 700 years before the Christ child came. That's like for reference someone writing in the Middle Ages about today. And he says... The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. And what I see there is that this shows that our God is not caught off guard. He is never surprised. Um, even this year, even with our sideways Christmas you might be experiencing um, right now, our God is not surprised. He knew when he sent his child into this world what Jesus would be getting into. He knew that he would die on the cross. He knew that some of us would choose to forsake him. He knew some of us would repent and follow. Our God is is never caught off guard, but he wanted to do all of this to demonstrate his love, his, his lavish love for us so that some of us might choose to follow him. So just to be clear, man, when, when God wants to do something in your life, even if it doesn't fit into your plans, even, even if it surprises you, you should know this, that you are in good company, that you are not alone that when things went sideways for Mary and Joseph, they trusted God. And, and God lived up to his promises. So that's our prayer for you. Our prayer is that you, when, when things go differently than what you planned, you would have that courage to choose to say, God, I am your servant. May your will be done. Let's pray. God, we, uh, we thank you for this time of year, the the fact that you have been planning for a long time to provide for your people. And, and you've done that, and you've done it through people like Mary and Joseph. And, and you've done it um, through people um, that, just like us, who have chosen simply to put our own wants and desires and plans and dreams aside and to trust you. We thank you for that ability. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, God. We we pray for that courage to come upon us that we might look and say to even your newborn infant child that we're going to be celebrating, yes, you are my king and my savior. Your will is the will of my life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this place to worship in this time and for this season, God. We love you. and It's in your son's powerful and saving name that we pray. to a time of communion and prayer now. And uh, our prayer team is gonna be down front. If, if you guys just would like someone to pray with you this Christmas, pray over you, we would be happy to do that. And um, man, we drink these, these little cups of juice, we eat this bread. It's to remind us of, of Jesus, this, 
the whole Jesus. See, he sat his friends and his followers down around a table. And, oh man, they, the plan was getting ready to go sideways. Things were going to go so wrong for them. And he was trying to prepare them. He was getting them ready. If anybody understands a sideways Christmas, <laughs> you guys, it's Jesus. So tonight, when you take this juice, when you take this bread, can you remember the same Jesus who said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who is and who was and who is to come. This Jesus has a plan for you, and no matter how sideways it looks, he loves you and he likes you. So you can take communion whenever you want as the band leads us in this one last song.
Holy Spirit just sort of snuck in there. <laughs> um, I hope that you guys have just an exceptionally blessed Christmas. Make the most of it. And we hope to see you tomorrow night at our candlelight service online or back here next week for SIA 2020. Merry Christmas. <laughs>